Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair Belair, the live edition. I'm broadcasting here in South Florida. It is Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Um, last, was it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday I did a stream on progress of the Pie Girl Project, and that's what we're going to look take a look at. So let's jump into the overhead. Uh, so I went ahead and did that update to the case, and I started wiring up some buttons and figuring out all the software stuff, so getting the, um, the buttons mapped. And what I wanted to highlight was these new buttons that are from Mauser. These are part number SKPDAM, or actually no, <laughs> 688 SKDDAM. And these are very nice, um, they're a little bit bigger than the six millimeter tack buttons, but they seem to fit okay. And that's what I have here. And if this will focus, it probably won't. But the thing is that, um, they're rubber elastomer type buttons, and they're very, very silent. You can't hear them at all. And they have a really nice feel to them. They feel uh, the exact same, if not better, than um, the buttons on a Super Nintendo controller. And um, they, they have a really nice feel to them. It's just two leads here. So we're going to try to either source them, get some that have a four leads, or we'll just get these. But these right now, they seem to work pretty well. So over here on this side, I have the the sort of regular standard six millimeter. You can hear they're very loud. And then these, of course, very, very quiet. So let me go ahead and plug this in. Um, so that's what I did most of the time yesterday was just installing um, RetroPie, um, getting a retro game to, to just mapping all the, all the, all the buttons uh, to the GPIO and then figuring out what are some good GPIOs, like trying to figure that out. Um, so everything is is work, was working okay. The the um, the start time isn't too bad. It takes maybe I don't know 20 30 seconds. I haven't really looked, but ideally what I wanted to do was wire everything to these available pinouts here. But um, I kind of screwed things up, so I ended up wiring things in the back there. This isn't how it'll eventually be, um, but it it still works this way. So you do have a couple options of wiring the buttons, and of course this is just prototype phase. Uh, I will be designing a custom PCB uh, for the buttons to, to sort of reduce on some of the wiring because you can see um, quite a bit of wiring. Not that much, but, you know, we can do a little bit better when, when you have a custom PCB. And really the main thing is that I want mounting holes and I don't want to have to, like, drill holes into these guys. There really isn't enough room here uh, to get this mounted the way I want in the enclosure. Um, this is the updated enclosure. Um, there's still some edits to do, uh, mainly the main thing is like adding a switch. I forgot to add a switch, adding the, come on, adding, um, shoulder buttons as well in the back here. And then I actually want to move these, uh, these two the groups of the buttons, move them up because when I hold it, my, my thumbs naturally want to be right here and they're to go down here. It doesn't feel bad, but it, it would be much more comfortable. If, uh, they were, if they were just raised up a little bit. So uh, that's what I want to do in this in this session here. So I'll update the, the, the CAD for the case. Um, here it is. Uh, it's very, very tiny, but you can see I got up, down, working. Let's do a little bit of a quick play test. Oh, it's hard to see. Let's play some Super Mario World. Um, these do fit on the 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 Game Girl 2 gamepad PCB, they do fit. You just have to sort of bend the leads uh, and just sort of move it, maneuver it um, in the right in the right order. Um, I don't have enough buttons, so I, I haven't updated this guy yet. Um, so these are still um, the six millimeter buttons, but I'm sure that they will work. I just need more buttons. And again, um, they're from Mauser. Um, part number that <laughs> that's the part number um, so yeah okay so let's quick do a quick play test here just to show that uh, you know the frame rate's pretty good on um, a pi zero I think it's pretty good and I died <laughs> um, yeah so you know it works uh, this, this is the only game I've tested um, but I'm sure other other games and, and ROMs work, other uh, emulators work. It's hard to play because like, um, 
Yeah, I'm terrible. <laughs> but anyway, that's just a quick play test. It's running, keys are working, and the software is running fine. Um, I guess we'll take a look at uh, some software stuff. So let's take a look. Uh, oh, printing in the background. Of course, Droney Trophy parts are just still printing. Uh, so huge shout out to uh, Phil B, Paint Your Dragon, Phil Burgess. Um, he updated the guide, uh, the running OpenGL based games and emulators on the Adafruit Pi 250 displays. This is the guide that uh, you definitely want to check out if you want to get any retro game projects running on the Pi TFT. Uh, it was updated, so it's working with the latest um, version of RetroPie, which is uh, 3.6, I believe. So I start off from downloading the RetroPie image, the correct one. So this is for the Pi 1 and the Pi 0. Again, that's what we're using in this project, the Pi 0. There's also a version for the Pi 3 and the Pi 2. Those are uh, different versions. So you have to get the right one uh, for your, for your uh, hardware. And right now it is 3.6. So I downloaded that, burned it to an SD card, and then just installed um, the Adafruit bootloader and the Pi TFT scripts and frame buffer tools. And that's all been updated and listed here. So you go through here, do some Adafruit Raspberry Pi bootloader. This thing takes the longest. It takes like 20 minutes uh, to install. And um, yep, you install the PyTFT helper, install the correct uh, version of the PyTFT. There's several different versions. There they are. And then install uh, frame buffer tools. Let's get that run in, install it in the new directory add some stuff so that it boots up on um, automatically boots up and just some extra stuff here uh, in your boot config pretty straightforward definitely check out this guide if you haven't already if you're planning to do a raspberry pi retro retro pi project with the pi tft um, yeah controls this one took a minute because i got confused with the uh the pinouts um, from the, the Pi TFT header, the 2.2 inch version. I got confused with these pinouts here. Those are the GPIO pins, not the position of the pins. So be sure you read very carefully <laughs> every step and um, figuring out which ones I can and cannot use. So that's pretty much it. Again, check out the guide, it's updated. Thank you, Phil B. Let's see, next up. What do you want to do next up? Hmm. Okay, let's do um, let's do CAD stuff. So, what I want to do is I need to add that switch first, right? So I want to add the switch first. So what I've already done is I have already designed the switch for the Pi Two, the Pi Girl Two project. So what I'll do is I'll just open that up and then save it out into the uh, the Pi Zero project folder. Because if right now if I were to right click on it and insert it into that, it'll make it. Uh, it'll it'll break the link and sort of make uh, make the component inside there, and I wanted everything sort of outside of the project. So, um, give you a second here to open. Hopefully, the servers aren't down today. In the meantime, I can take a look at the chat. Say hello. Hey, what's up, Andrew? Yes, I do plan on, on using soft switches on both sides. It's just that I, I didn't have enough buttons. Um, should have bought more. I, I do actually have more. Yep, thank you, Pedro, for putting the link to the mouse root buttons. I think Pedro was in there. What's the breadboard wired from behind? I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay, this finally opened. So let's go ahead and save this out as put it in the right spot, Pi Girl 0, and I'll put it in there, switch version 2, I'll just call it slide switch. And I need to figure out a good spot for it. I'm thinking, hmm, probably on the, the right side? Yeah. Okay, so let's jump out of that, go into Pi Zero, open this up, wait 20 minutes, or not. There we go. Okay, just took a minute to to get in there. Okay, so I'll bring this in now. Right click, insert into current design. My uh thing is like wigging out. Okay, here it is. 
So I'm thinking somewhere over here on the right side, so... Let's just move it into place. I think it's... I think I'll have to rotate it a bit. Yeah, I have to rotate it a few different ways. So this way... I can't believe I missed the switch. It's like... I knew I was missing the shoulder buttons, which I was like, yeah, I'll add them in there. I just want to get the, the feel of the buttons right. And then it's like, oh, wait, how do I turn this off? Oh, yeah, I need a, need a slide switch. That looks to be in the center almost. Yeah, something like that. And then see if I can get it dead on the edge here. Maybe point four. Let's go over here. Okay. I should have moved it a little bit more down. Yeah. Let's turn on the section analysis so I can see through it. Oh, it's the wrong way. So to be able to see through your um, your stuff, you can use the section analysis uh, tool, which is under inspect. So click on that, you select a face, so I want this face. And then I can drag this in and get a peep, a peek. Hit OK. And then you have like your own analysis uh, folder where you can have different types. So I have two different sections. So what I want to do is I want to drop this down all the way down. So let's move it again. Move. And then switch. Actually, make sure it's components selected. An easier way is to, is to click on the thing first and then click move. There you go. And let's see if... Uh, where this is here. Whoa, too far. Let's turn this off, the section thing. Now, do I want it in the center center of the grid or the center of the case? Hmm. Let me do a quick feel here. Hmm. I'm just sort of feeling it out here. That's why I'm, you don't see anything. I think that'll be okay. Yeah. I'll be able to recess it in so it doesn't like mess with your hand when you're playing. Kinda want it a bit more. Let's do this again. Uh, hold this first and then move. Something like that. That's fine. And I'll turn off the top case so I can see if there's anything touching it. I don't think so. Nope. The leads are, I can cut them short. They are a little long and I didn't draw them here, but um, I can cut them short so that it's, it's in a good spot. It's pretty close to the power boost where it needs to be anyway. So I think that's a good spot for it. Okay, so if I wanted to cut a hole, what I would do so we project a sketch to it, so we're going to cut the hole on the bottom, so we'll keep that open. And I'll project sketch here, so let me close this data window so I can get all my stuff. All my icons here. And I don't have project there, but that's fine. Or wait, yeah, I do. P. Yeah, let's capture position first. That's a good thing to do before you do any edits. So I lock, this will lock it in, take a snapshot of, uh, of the part here. So now I click on that surface. And I'll hit OK. And what I'll do is I'll make a offset of this. And I might want to move it though. Let's do this first. Um, let's just cut the hole then. I don't think I need an offset. 
what I'll do is actually reference um, the PyGirl project. So bring back the date panel and see if there is a, an offset that I have to worry about, like tolerance wise. I'm not, I don't remember if there is or not. So good thing I've made one before. Give that a minute to open. Oops, I'm in the wrong. Duh, have to get to the right spot. So I'll just reference the PyGirl2 case and see if there's an offset on the slide switch cut out. And the slide switch is over there. Yep, looks like I do. I have a little bit. I think it's 0.2. So what I can do is just open up the sketches and take a look. Um, should be called something like slide switch hole. There you go. Let's open that. Let's see. Uh, threw me somewhere else. Somewhere where I didn't want to be. Looks like I have a couple of offsets here. And I don't see any measurements here. Uh oh. Let's just do a quick uh, inspect. This guy here. Just measure what this is. That. It is 0.2. Okay, so there is a slight 0.2 offset. So what I'll do. Let's go ahead and close this. Well, let's leave it open for now, in case I want to reference it again. It doesn't take so long to open it. And I'll go back to back in time to where I moved it before I did the snapshot. Or actually, I guess after I did the snapshot. And then move it again. Uh, again, gotta, gotta get in the habit of clicking the thing first and then clicking move. That just makes it easier for me. And then I'll move it out this way by 0.2. Uh, over here. Okay. All right. And then hopefully when I go back forward in time. Nope. It messed everything up. Okay. Let's go back. I should have snapshotted it again. Er. I don't think you can update snapshots. Like, you just have to make a new one. Okay. Uh, snap capture position. Okay, and then go forward. Okay, cool. So there's my projection. All right, let's go back into that sketch, or actually, let's name it. Um, switch cut out, or switch cut. Let's go into it, and then I'll do that offset. And I can use my offset tool, which is under sketch. Click on that. It likes to have the thing by default, and I'll put 0.2. Pretty close, 0.2. Okay. And I'll hit stop sketch, and then I'll cut that hole out. Uh, just hit E on my keyboard to extrude. It's over here under modify, or should be under modify. E. Both of these guys. And what I'll do is I'll change the extents from distance to two, and then select the surface. So I'll go distance to two. I'll say this side over here. So it cuts through that. Operation is cut. Hit OK. OK. There's my slide switch. Alrighty. So that is the slide switch. Okay. Cool. So the next thing I want to do is, well, let's save it real quick. Excuse me. So the next thing I want to do is, is figure out um, a good method for adding sh shoulder buttons and let me show you real quick let me share with you over the overhead here these buttons here so I, I ordered quite a few buttons and these are also sort of silent they're not exactly as silent um, as the as these buttons here but they are can you hear that 
No, you can't really hear it. Maybe you can. But they're pretty silent. These are from a different manufacturer. Um, they're from ALPS. And then these are from... Oh, no, they're, they're both from the same manufacturer. Okay, cool. Yeah, but they're a little bit bigger, so you can see here the parrots are in. Actually, they look the same. Isn't that funny? Hmm. But they're surface mount. So, you, c you can totally wire something to it, but maybe leads is the better way to do it. You know what's different is the um, the actuator, the little rubber piece here, is is a little bit larger. So they're they're kind of small for a for a shoulder button. Um, in the Pie Girl project, I'm using these 12 millimeter buttons. So I wonder if I want to use those or these. Yeah, you can still hear it. So mm, I don't know. They do, they do make considerable less noise than uh, these shoulder buttons on the... Um, not as noisy, but they're not as big. And I think shoulder buttons need to be kind of big, so... Or at least the, the button itself will be bigger. So... I have to figure out a good position of them. So the question is, do I use these or do you use the 12 millimeter uh, loud buttons? Or do I find 12 millimeter buttons that are silent? It's kind of hard. Thanks for posting the link, Pedro. Just catching up on the chat. Okay. So, I think, um, yeah, I have to give some thought here. So I'm not sure whether or not I want to use these buttons. Um, give me a second here, just to make sure. This is all good. Okay, it's all good. All right, so if I wanted to make some shoulder buttons, I should at least get the some of it going first. And I'm, I'm thinking whether or not I want to make them on the outside of this project. Or Yeah, I definitely want to make them on its own project thing. So I kind of like the size of the Pie Girl 2 ones. So I might just reference this for size since I don't have a... Um, something else to reference. Well, I mean, I do have a, a Super Nintendo controller. Those are pretty big. Those are about, like, let's say here to here. So maybe, maybe they should be pretty big. I'm thinking a good size would be, like, the width of, of, like, these buttons here. So that's about 28 millimeters wide. And then something like maybe five or so. so. Let me just do some sketches here just to figure out how it could be. Let me hide all the components. It's, it's kind of slow. For whatever reason, I can't select the components. Thinking something like this. Put uh, 28 here and 8 here. Yeah. And then just to see the. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Sort of big. And it'll. I'll, I'll figure out the mounting stuff later. Um, since I've done, what I've done before is uh, on the Super Game Pie, I made it so I had like little slot inserts so that um, the button could be held in place with those slots. And then when you close the case, it'll have somewhere to rest on so it doesn't just fall out. 
think that might be a good uh, a good size for it. It should be like the width of your finger, and your finger is about, or at least mine is, eh, it's about 15. So maybe a little bit bigger. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be the whole width, but maybe 12. And this should be not 22, 28. Yeah, so why not? It's a huge. Maybe 10. Looks a little bit too big. Yeah, I think 10 will, will do it. 28 by 10. And if I want to get this in the middle. I guess I could do some construction lines, figure out where it is. It's like right there. Just drawing out this line to make sure I'm in the center of that sketch. And then I'll make this into a construction line. And then I think I could just do a collinear where I say this guy should be right there. And it moved it, yeah. So now it's in the center. And I got this big piece here, which was projected. I don't really want it to be projected. So let me hide these top and bottom cases, just so I can select these guys, and then make them into construction lines, like that. Just by hitting X on my keyboard, or hitting that button that comes up here when you have something selected. And I'll just make it so it's not sort of accessible, it's just more of a a reference point. Swap hands. I got swap hands. Oh man, again. <laughs> I've been designing and nobody's been seeing it. <laughs> yeah, so I've just been drawing out a shoulder button, like the profile of one, and this is what it looks like here. So it's about 28 by 10. And that's about it there. That's all I did. I was just um, sort of going back and forth in different sizes and sort of eyeballing a good uh, size of the of the shoulder pad. So I think that's good. Um, now what I'll do is now that I have those dimensions. It's a lot easier to just build it inside here as opposed to building it outside of the main assembly. Um, so that's probably what I'll do. It adds a lot of um, it adds a lot of steps here, though. I'm already getting pretty lengthy on my my timeline. I want to have this timeline just be uh, operations to make the case as opposed to making parts in the case. Or components, so that's why I have a lot of things made here, made um, as a separate component. So let's let's take these measurements. It was uh, 10 by 28, and I'll start a new design, and we'll just draw from here because I need to draw the component anyway, like the button, and figure out the like actually model out the the actuator so that I have clearances and things figured out. So. Let me uh, draw that. It was 28 by 10. Or 10. Oops, let's do that backwards. Yep. Now I need to figure out how how big it needs to be. Probably six or so. That's a bit much, yeah, let's go with four. Then let's uh what I need to add is like an offset here. So that I have um sort of a guard so that the the button stays inside of the case. So I'll just make an offset here. Probably one millimeter, maybe one point five. 
Okay. So that way when I extrude this piece, do like one. Five. Ah, it doesn't need to be that thick. Let's just do one. So bear with the slowness of uh, streaming and catting. Okay. So now that that's set, I can do some fillets and stuff. I'll probably give this a bit more. Be like one more. Just a. Because it's um the uh, the case is about 1.5 millimeters, so I have to think about that, like how much is actually going to be outside. And I don't want that much. I want like about at least two millimeters outside, so that should be good. So what I can do now is just add some fillets, so they're not like pointy square. I forgot to add this one. Five is uh, that's pretty good. And then this one is thirteen. Eleven point five. That is probably going to be the button. Something like that. So that's just a quick sort of LNR button. And what I'll do is I'll save this out now call it shoulder button and then I'll import it and see if like the thickness or the the depth of it is is enough for the case because I, I don't think it is I think I might need needs to be a little bit bigger yeah I like them to protrude out a little bit more so let's do that let's say six my cat here is wigging out like that and then later I'll um, once I figure out the a good position and uh, clearance in the case I'll, I'll design the component within this part here and then just update it from here so um, I'll go ahead and import it in uh, in the right part in the right spot right folder Okay, should have designed it, um, yeah, that's fine, I'll just move it into place. I was, I was thinking in my head like I should design it so that it's on the right uh, plane, but I think that'll work. So it's going to be like that. Sure, why sometimes in Fusion I can't type in this dialog. It just doesn't let me. So I have to go over here. Yep, right there. Again, I can't type in the dialog. The floaty dialog. Looks like it needs to be down a bit more. Not that much. Yeah, 
Looks pretty, pretty spot on. Okay. And what I should have just turned off the sketch. And one thing I recommend is when you save a component that's linked to a master assembly, wait until the thing's done, because if you rush it, it'll kind of mess up. Get latest. Kind of wish it would automatically, you know, but whatever. Automatically update for you. Okay. Let's get rid of the sketch wall, which will, which will be, eh, I don't think we need it now, actually. It's just the sort of um, prototype, what, what size is good. So I'll delete that. So I wonder if I can duplicate this guy, like mirror it. I think I can. Let's do mirror. Mirror. Uh, I don't think you can mirror components. I don't see it listed. Yeah. Hmm. I might have to break this link. Which is kind of a shame, but we'll see here. You Let select it first, and then, and then mirror. Nope. I've never mirrored a. I've never had need to mirror a component, but I guess you can't. Yeah. So what you would have to do is break the link, and then mirror it as. Uh, as a body. And then we can use our origins. Oh, I don't have an origin. I'll have to make a construction plane. So what I can do is to figure out the middle of the case itself, since it's not centered to the to to the to the grid anymore. I need to use a construction plane. A midpoint construction plane, so midplane here. This creates a a plane where it's in the middle of something. So I pick two spaces. So this one, and then this one. Warning, it's not visible. Yep, I know. Let me turn that on. It's its own folder thing here. So there you go. So that's where all my constructions are. I'll turn the first one off, and that'll be my mirror line because it's the center of the case so let's click on that how many times do I have to click <laughs> and mirror then I'll select my mirror plane which is this guy and I'll hit OK OK there's my shoulder buttons so they protrude out a little bit not too much I think I think it's pretty good And we'll make cutouts and stuff like that later. But I really need to figure out um, which uh, which buttons I need to use. So I'm going to do a little bit more research because I don't want to just like uh, rush into a button and then have to redesign it. But I think they're in good spots. I think that'll be pretty good. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go do some research. And you know what I could do is probably move this up. But because I have a button here and things, I might want to hold off on that as well until I figure out the button, thickness of it, holders for it. Because then this might clash with it. So let me show you here. Let me just turn all the things back on. I might need that clearance for, um, for the button. So we'll see. I think that's a good spot to end this stream though. So let me go ahead and save this and say added shoulders. And yeah, a lot of, a lot of sort of pausing and thinking were, were involved in this one because um, sort of building new stuff for it. But there you go. Just a little inside progress on uh, being made here. So let me go ahead and 
Uh, let's keep that there. Jump into questions. Um, if you guys have any... Oh, got some guys that are banned. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the sharing screen thing. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to use conductive filament here. Because it's a... Uh... Not not the best um, method. Yeah, and I need to figure out um, a better way to have the chat here, because right now um, I have to manually keep going over here. And it might, might, not, might be the best way to do it, because I, I do miss a lot of chat, so. All right, guys, well, I'm going to end the stream here. Quick look at what I'm printing. It's a column piece for the drone trophy. It's got halfway to go, but again, I will do some more research on the project. Just wanted to give you guys a quick one on, um, wow, I'm out of sync. I totally need a new computer or something. Um, yeah, well, thank you guys for joining. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll try to do another stream when I have some more progress to share, but uh, there you guys have it. I'll see you guys later. Until next time, remember to keep on making, and be sure to check out some stuff on Adafruit. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.